In this video, we are going to talk about some equivalent polar coordinates. Um, so we're going to name three other pairs of polar coordinates for this point right here. So remember that your polar coordinates is your radius and your angle. Okay, so the radius is 3, the degree measurement is 140. So, um, and we're going to restrict their, the answers that we're going about to create that our angle measurements are going to be locked somewhere between negative 360 and positive 360. So the first thing is um, polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are not x and y um, kind of coordinates. They are talking about just these circles getting bigger and bigger and bigger based on the radius. So first thing we have to pretend is this is an actual circle. So if this is an actual circle, uh, I am made, made my circle out a distance of 3 in every direction. Okay, And then I want to plot the point 140. So 140 is going to be... Um, let's see, this is 80, so somewhere around there. Let's do this in red. All right, so our point is somewhere around there. So types of information that I need in order to make this point um, is, let's throw in a reference angle. So the reference angle is 40. So to get there, I could go out 3, go 140 degrees. But I could also go out 3 and go backwards to get there. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It would get us in the exact same location. So if I go um, 3, uh, and then I go 180 and another 40, we're talking a negative 220 degrees. So that's one way to get there. All right. Another way to get there is... Instead of going in a positive direction for your radius, you could go a negative radius and then move. So if you want a negative radius, and then you have to figure out how far it takes to get all the way around to there. All right, so um, basically you're gonna be 40 degrees shy of 360. So another way to think of this is this point here, um, and then reflect it over because of the negative. So if it's easier to do that, then starting with the negative three and then moving around, um, some people might be a lot more comfortable with thinking of our point being reflected, because that's what the negative is gonna do. So treating this as if this is your point and then we're gonna reflect it because of the negative. So to get here, you still have this same exact reference angle of 40. Let me make this the bigger point because that's our end point. Um, so to get here, you're talking 320 degrees, and then the negative radius reflects it over. All right, so then that's one thing. But then you could also, um, to get here, go 320, but you can also go backwards. You could go negative 40. So if you went negative 40 and then reflected it over, that would take care of it as well. So basically, out of these four total, you're going to have three, you're going to have two positives and two negatives. Um, and then there's definitely relationships going on with the angles. Um, there are formulas. I'm not a formula person. I would rather just draw myself a visual and kind of logically figure it out. So again, real quick, the original point was 3, 140. And then I could have gone this direction instead and did my negative 220. Or I could be talking about the reflected point. And so figuring out that it takes 320 to get there or negative 40 and then having a negative radius to reflect it over to the original to our point that we're shooting for. So that's a couple ways. And technically, there's an infinite amount of these things because you could do a bunch of coterminal angles. That's why your, um, your theta typically gets locked in between 360 and negative 360.